Welcome back to Book Break. This video is all about funny books. I have made one of these videos here on Book Break before, so I will link to that below, a video full of hilarious recommendations, everything from This Is Going To Hurt to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and so much in between. And you all loved that one. So I am back for more, diving straight in, because we've got a lot to get through in this video. Recommendation number one is Theroux the Keyhole by Louis Theroux. Louis Theroux is beloved for his very dry sense of humour. This book, Through the Keyhole, was written during lockdown and so instead of going and exploring the weird and wonderful lives of other people that Louis Theroux is most famous for doing, he instead turns the lens on himself and on his family. So this is Louis on Louis. Then there's A Funny Life by Michael McIntyre. This is his second autobiography. His first autobiography told the story of his life up to his 2006 big break and this book takes it from there. It tells the story of his journey through fame. He's got a bunch of amazing career-defining moments in there and a lot of disasters that happened along the way and of course being Michael McIntyre this book is laugh out loud funny. For some fiction, Anxious People by Frederick Backman makes a bit of a change from Frederick Backman's usual very heart-wrenching style. This one is completely absurd. It's just as emotional, but it is very funny. So Anxious People tells the story of an accidental hostage situation. A bank robber didn't mean to end up holding an open apartment viewing full of people hostage, but that is kind of just what happened. The whole story goes from the sublime to the ridiculous, introducing a whole host of larger-than-life characters. I laughed and cried the whole way through it. But if that was wholesome humour, I've got some very dark humour here, Mother for Dinner by Shalom Auslander. This is described as a grotesque family comedy. It's about a family of cannibals. In this book, the last living family of cannibal Americans have a problem. Their mother has just died and her final dying wish was for, in the tradition of their family, the children to eat her. But even divided between all 12 children, that's a lot of meat. Plus, it wouldn't really be divided between 12, because one of them's already dead, one of them keeps kosher, and one of them's a vegan. From that premise alone, you can see what a ridiculous journey you're about to embark on by reading this book. I can't resist dark comedy, so I'm also going to recommend My Sister the Serial Killer by Ayankan Braithwaite. This is a thriller comedy about two sisters, one of whom keeps murdering her boyfriends. It is up to Kurede, the older sister, time and time again to save the day after her younger sister accidentally murders someone else. This has been a bit of a Marmite book, which makes it really fun. It's not quite what you expect from a thriller. It's not quite what you expect from a comedy. I thought it was fantastic. We Are Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby is a hilariously relatable essay collection that manages to capture a lot of powerful emotional truths while also filling the book with anecdotes that will make you spit out your drink laughing. Samantha Irby is a blogger and comedian who manages to brilliantly make fun of her very difficult childhood and some of her very sad situations she's been through, some of the very awkward situations that she's been through Everyone will see a lot of themselves in various parts of this essay collection. And for another really funny essay collection, I've got Why Not Me by Mindy Kaling. This is actually her second collection of essays. And of course, it's Mindy Kaling, so you will not be able to stop laughing at this book. Just like her first collection is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me, Mindy Kaling somehow manages to be relatable despite living a very different life. She hangs out with celebrities. She's a glamorous actress slash producer. I can share precisely zero of those experiences with her, but I found myself mirrored in a lot of these pages. In the last one of these videos I made, I recommended the hilarious Diary of a Somebody by the poet Brian Bilston. So this time I'm going to recommend the book that that title was inspired by, Diary of a Nobody by George and Whedon Grossmith. This is a very funny classic about a bank clerk called Charles Pooter who really thinks a lot of himself and mistakenly believes that a record of all of his comings and goings, including with his good friends Mr. Cummings and Mr. Going, are worthy of permanent record. How to Win at Feminism is a completely ridiculous book that I laughed until my face hurt at. This is created by the website Reductress, which is like a feminist version of The Onion, so that hopefully gives you an idea of how hilariously stupid this book is going to be. It's a satire of pop culture feminism with chapters like designer handbags to hold all your feminism. <laughs> how to be feminist without being too opinion-y. It's fantastic. 
Diary of a Drag Queen by Crystal Rasmussen does what it says on the tin and brilliantly. You'll get snippets of queer theory in this autobiography mixed in with loads and loads of anecdotes about sex, makeup and ambition that will have you choking with laughter and learning something as well. Ayuadi on Ayuadi by Richard Ayuadi is a sort of parody of introspection. So in this book he interviews himself through 10 brilliantly insightful and often unexpectedly erotic interviews. For another brilliantly funny autobiography, there's The Misadventures of Awkward Black Girl by Issa Rae, which is her story of being awkward and introverted in a world that idolises people being cool and black in a world that thinks being black makes you cool. So her life feels like a series of contradictions and she is at the middle of it feeling incredibly awkward. So this is a collection of hilarious essays, some of her funniest stories that will be so relatable to you whether you are cool yourself or whether, like most of us, you're incredibly awkward yourself. The Princess Bride by William Goldman is one of my favourite books. I absolutely love the movie as well, but even if you've seen the movie, you are not prepared for this book. The levels of ridiculous comedy that this book goes to are just fantastic. In here you get way more backstory about characters that are only minor in the movie. You also get a whole overly complicated framing device that will leave you puzzling over whether The Princess Bride is actually a real book or not and it has a totally different ending so you don't know where it's going. If you've never seen the film The Princess Bride so you don't know what I'm talking about, first of all go and fix that, but second of all I'll give you some of the flavour here. Get ready for some poison, revenge, giants, snakes, spiders, fencing, lies, miracles, oh, and a long and perilous chase. It's a parody of the adventure novel and it is so much fun. The Discworld series by Terry Pratchett is a series of 41 books, so this will really keep you laughing for a long time. This is a comedy fantasy series that parodies so many different genres, so many different authors. All of the Discworld books take place on a flat, circular world which balances on the back of four elephants which are standing on the back of a giant turtle. The world may seem completely different to our own but somehow through these books you explore a lot of human issues. Then for some comic sci-fi there's To Say Nothing of the Dog by Connie Willis. So this one the name is taken from a book I recommended in the last version of this video which again I will link below. Three Men in a Boat to Say Nothing of the Dog by Jerome K. Jerome. I won't tell you about that book again because I already told you in the last video but it is very very funny and this book takes its title from there. So To Say Nothing of the Dog is a time travel rom-com about a present day time traveller who decides a holiday in Victorian England sounds very relaxing but the trip turns into anything but. Love is for Losers by Vibka Brueggemann is a very very funny YA novel. This is like a modern updated version of the George Nicholson books, Anger Songs and Full Frontal Snogging and so on. It's like that meets sex education. It's wonderfully progressive, it's wonderfully queer and it is so endlessly funny. The book actually covers a lot of deep issues which I wasn't expecting to find in there and they're explored so brilliantly, keeping me laughing the whole way through even when it was approaching some quite heavy or quite sad topics. And finally, recommendation number 19 on this list is The Appeal by Janice Hallett. This is a murder mystery, it's a parody of the cosy crime genre. It's a very interesting book, it's mixed media, mostly told through emails and documents. Two law students are trying to work out what happened in a murder case and it is very funny. As well as being very gripping and mysterious, the characters in here are such perfect cliches of the small town amateur dramatics society that's being described in here. I just loved every second. So there were 19 hilarious book recommendations to keep you laughing well into the new year and beyond. Do leave a comment below with any of your favourite funny book recommendations because I'm always looking for a good laugh. I will link here to the last video we made recommending funny books in case you haven't seen that one yet. So do click through and have a look and have a laugh and I'll see you next time.